Hey, this is Matt from MasterSketchup.com. In this video, I'm going to give you a review of the Profile Builder 2 plugin. So I'm going to just run through this real quick on some of the main features of the plugin. Then we're going to dive a little bit deeper into some of the specific functions of the plugin. So at its core, Profile Builder allows you to extrude profiles throughout your model. So with this main tool here, you select a profile and you click the build tool. Let me just delete this here and click build. And you just click through your model to create these groups automatically. And you'll notice that the profiles get mitered automatically at inside corners, outside corners, and it's just a really quick way to extrude these profiles throughout your model. Now, it comes with a library of various profile members that you can um, you know, download for free and use in your model. You can also create your own custom profiles. So we'll dive into that a little bit later on. Um, so in addition to being able to create individual profiles and extrude those through your model, you also get the assembler tool. So if I close the profile builder tool and open the assembler tool, this is the, the kind of thing you can create with assemblers. So imagine, you know, if you were to create this crown molding buildup using the profile builder um, tool, you'd have to do each one of these individually. So you'd have to extrude these four different profiles. With the assembler tool, you can actually do this all in one shot. I just selected this crown uh, buildup assembly that I created, clicked the uh, build assembly tool, and just using the inference system built into SketchUp, I can create four of these profiles all at once. And again, automatically mitering and uh, doing the inside outside corners. So you can imagine how powerful this this tool becomes um, when you create all these uh, when you add all these different profiles to an assembly and again you can save these you can customize these however you want um, there is a small library available for free that you can download as well um, now that's not the only thing you can do in assembler uh, when you add profiles with components you can create really complex um, assemblies. So you have these two tabs here. So in addition to just you know profiles that get extruded along the path, you can also add component areas. So let me let me open up an example here. So the railing. So that's this assembly right here. So this has a bottom rail, the top rail. So those are two, the two objects that are extruded along the path that you're creating. But then in addition to that, there are a number of components that get inserted along the path at a specified interval. So we have the end post, the uh, spindle, uh, the, you know, the different balusters. And um, so let me show you what that looks like. So if I click the build tool and You just click along, and every every time I click, it gets treated as a junction, so inserts that post um, wherever I click. So you can customize these however you want. You can see the number of different uh, settings that you can specify. You can have infill. You can have the component inserted at the start, at the end, at the junctions define the different setbacks. I'm not going to go into too much detail on how to configure these. Um, that's probably going to be another another video. Um, and you can also, when you create an assembly um, that's not restricted to a specific plane, to a single plane, you can create things like stairs. So if I click the build tool, and you can kind of see how it's extruded and how, you know how it inserts those components depending on the 
the height that I, um, you know, move my mouse to. And then you just click escape to, uh, to end. Now, the third main tool that Profile Builder 2 comes with is the quantifier. So this allows you to um, assign pricing to any object in your model. So not only profiles uh, and assemblies that you create with these tools, but really anything in your model. We're going to dive into this with another example in a little bit here. But those are the main three tools. And we're going to dive in. Let's go ahead and, and kind of look at how these, um, how these tools really work. So the thing I really like about Profile Builder is you can use it right out of the box really easily. Um, or you can dive into more um, advanced uh, controls to, to really take advantage of uh, some of these features here. So we already showed you how to you know, click along and create a profile. Um, and just remember, it's very much like the line tool. So as you're clicking along, you can use the, um, the inference system that comes with SketchUp. So, for instance, you can tap the right arrow key to lock the red axis. You can tap the left arrow key to lock the green axis. You can, you know, snap to any point in your model. Now, a lot of times in your model, you already have a path uh, that you can follow. So, you can actually, uh, if you enter the group where that path exists, so if I want to create this crown molding along this, uh, these edges here, there's a special tool, the Smart Select Path, that helps you uh, select edges in your model, and then you click the Build Along Path button to extrude the profile in one step. So that's really handy um, because the Smart, Sele Smart Path Select tool gives you a visual visualization of which direction the profile is going to extrude. So if you imagine the way this works is the profile will extrude as if you were, you know, clicking and then pushing your mouse away from you. So, you know, if I align, since this is where I started, so I clicked here first and then I moved the mouse away from me and you can see the profile matches right here. And you'll see this red dot um, at the bottom left corner of the profile. So that's telling you where the profile will be extruded in relationship to the path that you click or the path that you select in your model. So you have some basic positions that you can select. So in this case, it would be more appropriate to have a top left uh, position for the insertion point since this would be really, there would be a ceiling. Um, so I'd be clicking on the path where the ceiling intersects the wall. Um, and a great thing about Profile Builder is you can actually update existing profiles that you've already created without having to redraw them. So in this case, I made a mistake. I had the insertion point in the wrong spot. So I can just select the profile, click update member, um, you know, edit member attributes, I think is what it says. And you get this little pop-up where you can select which attributes you want to update and click apply. So it's very much like, um, you know, if you're updating a scene in SketchUp, how you get the, you know, the selection of, you know, which which attributes of that scene you want to update. So it's the, it's the same uh, principle here. So I'm just going to select everything and click apply. And you see the um, profile is immediately redrawn um, with the updated uh, position. Now this is really handy if, for instance, imagine you're creating a uh, chair rail in here. So I can go to the, uh, the library and um, and by the way, this all of these profiles here are available for free. When you when you buy the plugin, you can download all of these um, all of these profiles to use in your model. So it's a pretty extensive library. There's hundreds of profiles that you can use. So I'm going to select this chair rail. By default, you'll see it's um, aligned to the center of the path. So I'm going to choose a bottom left and let's say I know um, that I want it 
you know, 30 inches above the floor. So I can just set this offset to 30 inches. And when I, um, let me just hide everything else. Um, and when I click build and start clicking through here using this, you know, the, the intersection of the floor and the wall, that molding is, is automatically offset that 30 inches. So that's, that's really handy too, because, you know, you can save, I can save this um, to my library. And then every time I, every time I grab that profile out of my library, it's going to save that offset. You also have things like um, the rotation. So you can type in a rotation angle here. You can mirror the profile. So sometimes, uh, you know, it might extrude differently than what you expect and you can just mirror it and um, update it to, to be proper. Um, the dimensions of the profile are shown here as well. I find this to be really helpful for just straight lumber. Um, so the, you know, the profile builder plugin is not limited to moldings. It, it's, it's literally anything, any type of profile that you, um, that you want to extrude. So there's, there's a number of different libraries on the profile builder website that you can download. And a quick link to that is actually right here. If you click that link, that'll bring you to the website where you can download the different profiles. Um, so the uh, the dimensions here, if you break the um, the aspect ratio, the link between those two there. So I could come in here and update this and it'll change that. I find the only time I really do this is if it is a square profile, um, but it is it is useful if you wanna scale up an entire profile, you can, you know, have that link remain and, you know, type in a number and then this, this number will change as well. You can also assign a default layer and material to your profiles as well. And the, um, the, the cool thing is the, the, the material will be mapped properly, um, when it turns a corner. So it's not gonna, so it'll kind of like keep the grain oriented properly as it's uh, creating junctions. So in addition to being able to extrude a profile along a path or along an existing path, you can also create um, single kind of turned uh, revolutions of the profile. So you're revolving the profile around it, a, a circle. And you can also stamp a single profile in there if you wanted to do that. And um, th these tools are really helpful too, being able to sample an attribute and um, making an update to it and saving that update. You can also select uh, profiles that are in your model based on whatever the current um, configuration is. So let's say you had multiple profiles or you know you had crown molding in, in multiple rooms in a model and it wasn't very easy to select all of those you could select them um, by you know configuring the profile clicking on profile name apply and it would select all of those crown moldings in the entire model as long as they're in the same context and then you can make that update um, really easily now adding your own custom profile is really easy. You just create um, any, you know, any single surface. So let's say this is the profile I want to add and you just select the, the surface and click add, add a name to it. And there you go. And then you can configure all of these settings and click save and it'll save it to your computer so you can use it on future projects. So the other tool I wanted to review with the Profile Builder 2 plugin is the Quantifier. Now this tool honestly could be its own plugin. What it allows you to do is create pricing calculations and assign those price rules to layers, objects, or materials in your model. So in this example, I have this kitchen, which you might recognize from my book. Um, and I have, you know, different prices assigned to various objects in the model. So these are just line items that I assigned to 
specific um, objects. So each cabinet I assigned a price. Now down here is a layer rule, which is actually calculated uh, based off of the square footage. So it actually pulls the square footage from any object that's assigned to the layer uh, for countertops. And let me show you exactly how that works. So um, if I go to the layer, um, the layer price rule, and I select the, the layer, you can see this rule right here. So the input is square footage and I assigned, you know, I just, I just threw in an arbitrary um, price of, of $10 per square foot. And so it'll calculate based off of, you know, the actual area of each of these and give a, um, you know, produce a report off of that. Now, one thing that's cool is you can use this cost inspector tool to provide a visual check on what objects have pricing assigned to them and which objects um, are missing pricing. So the objects outlined in green show that there are um, there is a price rule that's applicable to it. Anything in red is telling us that um, there's there's no pricing being calculated for that object. Now I find this tool a little bit weird because I, I kind of wish that I could you know, double click on the objects and navigate through the model. Um, you're kind of forced to use the outliner and then you get this weird ghosting, but you know, you move your mouse over and it disappears. So there's a little, little weird kind of user interface stuff that, that is a little annoying, but um, you know, other than that, it's uh, you know, it works, it works. Uh, it's a hundred percent accurate. It's just, a few little interface uh, features that I wish were improved. Um, so right now I'm inside the uh, LO Island group and we can see these three cabinets. This middle cabinet here has pricing and these ones don't. So if I, let's see, I'll go into this group and I can select that uh, cabinet and I can see that it's assigned this price rule. Now this one doesn't have pricing. So if I want to add it, I can just go click on object. So the cabinets I'm assigning, you know, a, a fixed cost um, per cabinet. So it's not being calculated off of any square footage. It's just being calculated by each. So I could throw in, um, you know, a price, let's say 150 and click OK and then we can see that that price is updated. So you have to like click on it again in order for the price to update. Another little small kind of annoyance there. Um, and you have to kind of re um, reload the, the cost inspector in order for the colors to update as well. So again, I feel like the quantifier could be improved a little bit. Um, I'd also like to see kind of a, just like a master overview of all of the price rules instead of having to dig in and select them individually. Um, I think that would be quite nice to, to be able to see that. So that's my review of the Profile Builder 2 plugin. You get the Profile Builder tool, the Assembler tool, and the Quantifier. So it's really three tools in one. You can download a free 30-day trial at mastersketchup.com forward slash profile builder. And that's my affiliate link. So if you do end up purchasing, I'll earn a small commission off of that. So I really appreciate it. If you, uh, if you do end up uh, finding this video helpful and end up purchasing there. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel. If you wanna learn more about SketchUp, visit my website at mastersketchup.com.